Hello everybody, this is my first tutorial. I'm Amanda from T's Original Arts and today I'm going to do a couple of uh, these little cute little 3x3 canvases. And I've got my medium here. It's the Magic Sauce. It's a mixture of Floetrol, Glue, and GAC 800. Um, it's 3 to 1 for the ratio. So because I'm just doing these cute little tiles, I'm not going to mix a whole bunch of paint. So I'm not going to measure it out. Usually I would put it on a scale and I'd measure it out, but I'm not going to measure it out today. So I forgot to take the goober off the end of the bottle. Okay. So I'll squirt a little bit in the bottom there. And I have these brand new color shift paints that I've been wanting to try. So I'm going to use a little bit of those today in my mixture. And uh, I try to, usually I do it two parts medium to one part paint. And so like I said, because my quantities are so small, today I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, these are just little practice canvases. I like to try out my new ideas on the small scale first. So we'll get these color shift paints in there. They're really cool. They change colors uh, depending on how the light hits them. So I've got three of those. And then I've also got in my glue bottle here, uh, it says white pour paint, but it's actually black. And it's the Liquitex black paint. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stir this up. And you've probably heard by now that you want your paint to be about the consistency of warm honey. Well, I don't know. I've never had warm honey. But I do know that if your paint's too runny, it won't work. And if your paint's too thick, it won't flow. So I usually just kind of like to get a feel for it. Like, see, there's a big mound on top of my stick. I don't really think that that's good, so I'll probably add a little bit of water to that in a minute. I'm going to let it sit while I stir these other two up. I really do like this medium. Uh, it, it's been giving me the best results. I've tried different ones. I will tell you that one medium that does not work is um, Elmer's school glue and Floetrol uh, mixed one-to-one. -one. That does not work unless you like your artwork to have little cracks in it. And I tried it just to be sure that that's what was giving me the cracks. The other day I did a couple of three by three square canvases. Um, they're a little bit bigger. I think I said these are three by three. They're really two and a half by two and a half. Um, but that, yeah, I tried it on the three by three canvases. I got all kinds of cracks. I was not a happy camper. So again, you can see the paints kind of piled up on top of the stick. It's running, but it's not real runny. So this is a, a mixture of some um, glue, just a little bit, and some water. And I'll just put a little bit in each of my cups. They were all about the same consistency. So I'm just going to give them a quick mix. And then I'll go back and I'll check them. Uh, one of the things that, a tip that I learned that I can share with you all is these little bottles of paint, you know, whether you get a, um, the ones at Walmart, uh, the apple blossom ones, which are great, or whether you get these color shift ones, save the caps. The caps are great for little projects. You can layer paint in them. Uh, today I'm going to do a ring pour, and so I'm going to be layering my paint in the little caps. So it's going to be kind of cool. Uh, you can also do uh, a flip cup using that uh, in a small space if you just need to, you know, have something smaller. All right, so here you can see the paints 
little bit better. I probably would add a little bit more water and then I'll be done. Oop, that water had a bubble in it. So um, if you want to save money and you're just getting going, you know, you can get the cheap Elmer school glue and you can mix it with water for your pouring medium. It's not going to be archival, but it will give you a good medium. And, you know, it's pretty inexpensive. And if you get those 50 cent paints from Walmart, get yourself some cheap canvases from Walmart or even some poster board. Uh, I know people that just practice on poster board and paper plates. Uh, that's more power to you. It'll work just fine. It's a great medium. Uh, just glue and water won't give you any cracks. I'll show you an example. Uh, I did this ring pour last night. That's just glue and water for the pouring medium. So it doesn't have any cracks. Uh, did that. That's just glue and water. And yellow and, and uh, gold were the only colors. And white. Um, and then I torched it. So that worked out pretty good. Alright, so here's my three colors. And I'm going to put a little black in first. We're going to do this. This is going to be a ring pour. So I'm going to put a little black in the bottom. Not a ton. I'm not real happy with my pre-mixed black. Uh, I'm going to put a little yellow on top of the black. The reason why is because I used to have white in that bottle and I forgot to rinse the nozzle out. So now my black isn't pure black. Uh, it's fine for these type of projects. I'm going to put the purple in between the yellow and the green. Actually, I'm going to put a black in between the purple and the green. And the green. So the less layers you make, the less likely you are to get mud. Just a little tip. I'll put some black on top here. The last color in is the first color out. And when I'm using these for a ring pour, I like to get a little close to the edge there too. All right, there's my cap of paint. It's full. I'm going to take this off of my tray just so that you can see it better. And I'm just going to start dumping paint on here. Here goes. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I should be doing a little swirling motion for a ring pour. I started mine off without the swirling motion because I wanted that effect on the edges. Oh, now that's kind of pretty. I didn't plan for that to happen. That's the interesting thing about paint pours is that you never plan for stuff to happen. Well, I'm not going to say never. You don't always plan for stuff to happen. And then stuff happens. So I gotta I guess I'll set this right on top of my cap here so that you can still see it. Which is not level. Alright, I'm gonna grab my torch. I like to give it a quick torch as soon as I dump it. This is what you get when you ask your husband for a torch for a project. <laughs> uh. Honey, I need a torch. Okay. All right, now I'm going to tilt and tilt. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take some of my other color and I'll put it on the corners like this to help the paint flow. That's why I keep it in a, in a bottle. And that'll help the paint flow off the edge like that on that corner. There we go. I don't ever wear gloves when I'm painting. I probably should, but I don't. 
So it's up to you how you tip. I kind of have an idea for this one. I want it to open up. So I'm going to go back this way. Whoops, you can't see that. This is my first tutorial video. So if you're watching this and you've seen my other tutorial videos and you're thinking, wow, <laughs> now you'll know because this is the first one. So I probably have a lot to learn about camera placement, prop placement, things like that. But we're going to get there. All right, now I'm going to open it up this way. There we go. Perfect. I like to brush the paint off the bottom as I go on these um, canvas boards because if they get too much paint on them, on the canvas board, they will... Sorry, apparently I can't talk and wipe at the same time. If they get too much paint on them, they'll warp, even the little ones. All right, so I guess what I need to really practice doing is tilting for the camera because I'm having an issue. See the back of my canvas? <laughs> I'm having an issue tilting my ring pour so that it goes where I want it to go and staying in the frame of the camera. Did I mention it's my first one? Okay. I am kind of digging these colors. I'm going to put some of that on the corner here to help with the flow. I'm going to put a little black right here on this corner and then I'm going to tilt it the other way. There. go. Now if I tilt it back that way, <laughs> oh I'm just dying here. So this looks nothing like a ring pour. But hey, my very first video. <laughs> uh, we have to learn. We have to learn how to do these things. All right, so normally I would tilt it and tip it until I have my rings where I want them. I seem to have gotten rid of my rings. But I do have some interesting things going on here. I want, to, I want to leave it like this only because this is the first time for me to use this color shift paint. There, I just torched it. You probably can't see that. But that's what it looks like now that I've torched it. So I'm going to set him over here. Um, oh, here, let me show you this. This is a ring pour that, that I did just before I set up my camera with different paints, see? Cool, huh? Okay. Uh, if you liked this video, please click like, click subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody in the world, and type fantabulous in the comments. Thanks for watching. GoPro stop recording. <laughs>